Hello and welcome to Crypto Cat Guru. Today, we are going to see how virtual humans become real through Microsoft's artificial intelligence. If you are new to our channel, please consider to subscribe and like our video down below. Also feel free to comment down below to respond to your thoughts with new valuable videos. Now through the power of computer graphics algorithms, we are able to create virtual worlds, and of course, within those virtual worlds, virtual humans too. So, here is our idea. If we have all this virtual data, why not use these instead of real photos to train a new AI to do useful things with them? Maybe this idea is not so brilliant after all. Especially because we can generate as many of these virtual humans as we wish, and all this data is perfectly annotated. The location and shape of the eyebrows is known even when they are occluded, and we know the depth and geometry of every single hair strand of the beard. If done well, there will be no issues about the identity of the subjects or the distribution of the data. Also, we are not limited by our wardrobe or the environments we have access to. In this virtual world, we can do anything we wish. Sounds good, right? But of course, here is the ultimate question that decides the fate of this project. And that question is, does this work? What is all this good for? And the crazy thing is that Microsoft's previous AI technique could now identify facial landmarks of real people. But it has never seen a real person before. And now, in an even newer emerged paper, scientists at Microsoft promise 10 times more landmarks. Let's see a different previous technique from just two years ago. You see that we have temporal consistency issues, in other words, there is plenty of flickering going on here. And there is one more problem. These facial expressions are really giving it a hard time. Can we really expect any improvement over these two years? Well, let's have a look at the new method and see for ourselves. It not only tracks a ton more landmarks, but the consistency of the results has improved a ton as well. So it both solves a harder problem, and it also does it better than the previous technique. And all this just one more paper down the line. We were wondering if it still works in the presence of occlusions, for instance, whenever the face is covered by hair or clothing or a flower. And let's see. It still works amazingly well. What about the colors? That is the other cool thing. It can, for instance, tell us how confident it is in these predictions. Green means confident, red means that the AI has to do more guesswork, often because of these occlusions. Our other favorite thing is that this is still trained with synthetic data. In fact, it is key to its success. This is one of those success stories where training an AI in a simulated world can be brought into the real world, and it still works spectacularly. There is a lot of factors at play here, so let's send out a huge thank you to computer graphics researchers as well for making this happen. These virtual characters could not be rendered and animated in real time without decades of incredible graphics research works. And now comes the ultimate question. How much do we have to wait for these results? Well, here is a previous technique that was amazing at tracking our hand movements. Do you see these gloves? Well, those are not gloves. This is how a previous method understands our hand motions, which is to say that it can reconstruct them nearly perfectly. Stunning work. However, these are typically used in virtual worlds, and we had to wait for nearly an hour for such a reconstruction to happen. Do we have the same situation here? 10 times better results in facial landmark detection, so what is the price that we have to pay for this? One hour of waiting again? Well, not at all. It is more than twice as fast as real time. It can churn out 150 frames per second, and it doesn't even require your graphics card, it runs on your processor. That is incredible. Here is one more comparison against the competitors. For instance, Apple's R kit runs on their own iPhones, and thus, they can make use of the additional depth information. That is a gold mine of information. But this new technique doesn't, it just takes color data, that is so much harder, but in return, it will run on any phone. Can these results compete with Apple's solution with less data? Let's have a look. The results seem at the very least comparably good. That is, once again, amazing progress in just one paper. Also, what we are really excited about is that variants of this technique may also be able to improve the fidelity of these deepfake videos out there. Imagine a new generation of these tools that is able to track even more facial landmarks and democratize creating movies, games, and all kinds of virtual worlds. Yes, with some of these techniques, we can even become a painting or a virtual character in the VVverse as well, and even the movement of our nostrils would be transferred. With that said, we are already at the end of our video. 
If you liked our content and you want to see more videos like this, please give a like down below and consider to subscribe to our channel. Your Crypto Cut Guru